And finally, it is finally time. Oh my goodness, I, 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 I'm beyond excited. Let me tell you, college football, it's so close. So close. I cannot, I, 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 got, I got a lot of things to say on, um, you, you all are going to be watching this on a Tuesday, so, you know, there's a lot to say, and as we go through the season, I'll be doing these every Tuesday, so every Tuesday, except for one late in the year, um, I'll be doing this weekly, so, you know, get yourselves prepared now, as I do my preseason, you know, preseason video before, you know, everything kicks off. We'll talk about week zero next week, and then, you know, week one, and yada, 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 as we go through the season. So this is the final normal season of college football. Of course, you know, the 12-team playoff, which I don't I don't like. It's coming in 2024, and conference realignment has continued, and I don't like it. You know, the Pac-12, you know, last time we really talked you know, college football was like during, you know, during like the second round of the FCS playoffs. So we didn't even get to talk about South Dakota State winning a national championship. Georgia obliterating TCU after two thrilling semifinals. Um, so USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, they're going to the Big Ten. Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado to the Big 12. And the leadership, George K, Larry Scott, I mean, just, I mean, how do you reject ESPN's offer that eventually went to the Big 12, and that went to the Big 12, then you tried to go to Apple, of all places, Apple, which has MLS, nobody cares about that, and, you know, some MLB games that people get real angry at because they can't watch you know, because MLB has the same problem as the WBA. Putting too, you know, having too many TV, you know, contracts with too many different companies. Like, they got contracts with everybody when they should try and simplify it. So, Oregon State, Washington State, Stanford, and Cal are kind of left in the dust right now. The Mountain West could scoop up OSU and WSU. Stanford and Cal might try to go to the ACC, but that got it. But that easily got rejected. That 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 was easily rejected. And then, you know, main it's mainly Florida State that wants out, but Clemson's also a major player that wants out of the ACC. Um, the grant rights thing that's been a big issue, but who knows what that actually means? And you know, the ACC's TV deal is kind of weird itself. You know, the Bali Sports Networks they're dying. So the CW has stepped in, which is crazy to think. Last year, and I'm really happy for the CW getting the stuff that, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, not not many people would, you know, willingly just go ahead and broadcast, you know, live golf, um, basically third-tier ACC games for football, men's basketball, women's basketball, IndyCar, uh, inside the NFL, long-running series going back to the a, uh, yeah, they did into like the nineties, early uh, late eighties. I mean, the CW stepped up. Wow, wow. And then the six and six model. We don't know if that's going to be a thing now. Remember, it was supposed to be for the twelve-team playoff, the top six champions, and then the next six at large. Who knows if that will be a thing? After all, come 2024. So why don't we start with the ACC. Um, the AP poll is out, so I'm using the AP poll. Um, and that is why we have Florida State at number eight, a really loaded team. And uh, I'm really high on this team. Jordan Travis is back. Trey Benson is back. Wide receiver core is back, you know. To being really good, and I mean an improving defense. You got a recipe for something. Clemson, you know they're number nine. We'll see if Dabo and Garrett Riley could get the defense on track. They weren't. They weren't doing too well last year. Kate Klubnik, is he that guy for Clemson? I don't really think so. 
but it is what it is there. And then North Carolina. North Carolina is down there at number 21. Drake May is back under Mac Brown. And this defense, it's a question mark, but it's Drake May. It's the Drake May show out in ACC country, you know. Um, in the Big Ten, we got a lot here to talk about from the Big Ten. I mean, Michigan, honestly, this Michigan team is elite, you know. J.J. McCarthy, Donovan Edwards, Blake Corn, they're all back. Elite defense. I expect this Michigan team to go to the playoffs. So you have two hints already. You have two hints of two teams that I'm projecting that will make the playoff. You have Michigan, you have Florida State. Those are two of the teams. Um, Ohio State, on the other hand, I don't think so. I don't think so. There's a little bit of a QB conundrum here. For Ohio State, that I don't think they will overcome. Um, like you have Marvin Harrison Jr., you have Trevion Henderson, you have Mayan Williams. That that that's all good dandy, y'all. You have you have some good pieces on the defense, but the question is, the quarterback. No more Stroud. So who's gonna step up? We'll see. Penn State. It's all on Drew Aller. You know he's got a, he's got a good backfield. He's got some good. He's got a really good defense. But the wide receivers are the biggest question mark for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And then Wisconsin, Luke Fickle's been brought in. You know the air raid has been brought in. Tanner Mordecai comes over from SMU. But yet they have Braylon Allen. I mean, come on, that 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 should tell you something right there. When you have a stud. You know, in you know, in a in a day and age where running backs are you know just kind of treated as like, you know, you need like three or four of them instead of just two. So the fact that Braylon Allen, that is a big question mark. What will what will he do in this new system? Because Wisconsin, you know, is kind of like Iowa, who. You know, can they? You know, speaking of Iowa, they're number twenty-five for some reason. Can they improve their offense? But going back to Wisconsin real quick, you know, I wonder is the air raid going to work out? Because you know they were a mostly under center team, you know, very West Coast style, and uh, something's got to give. Um, the only other thing I can say to watch aside from Kate McManera. Um, is maybe Talia Tagovailoa from Maryland, but that's about it. I mean, Maryland is mid, but Talia is going to do some good things, I bet, this year. In the Big 12, you have those Texas Longhorns who are favored to win the Big 12, and I don't think this team will be going to the playoff. I do think they will win the Big 12, though, with the talent they have, and if not... Um, you can expect literally anybody, any of these teams you see ranked here. You have Kansas State at 16, TCU at 17, Oklahoma at number 20, despite the fact that they were, you know, under 500 last year. And then Texas Tech, who was ranked in the coaches poll, but not in the AP. That's why the only other team that, um, the only, it's kind of flip-flop. Texas Tech was ranked in the coaches poll. I was ranked in the AP. But everybody else is ranked pretty much where they are supposed to be. But um, with Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns, you have Quinn Ewers, you have Xavier Wordy on one side, a good tandem, and then that defense, the Marion Overshow, and a couple starters are back for the Horns. So basically, this is the most experienced team coming back. And again, I'm expecting at least. Eight to ten wins, maybe a Big Ten title or at a Big Twelve title, and it'd be kind of funny, kind of like how Sam Houston um, won the last, um, you know, Southland title before, you know, the Southland kind of reorganized and Sam Houston moved up. Yep, Kansas State at sixteen. Will Howard's back. The defensive backs are a question mark, and they step up. TCU at seventeen. I don't know if Sonny Dykes is going to be able to run it back. There's just a, too many transfers that need to gel together. Oklahoma, come on now. 
look at that defense. I mean, at least Dylan Gabriel will be fun to watch. Definitely circle that Oklahoma UCF game. That'll be pretty fun. But yeah, I don't think this experiment's going to work out as everybody thought, in my opinion. Then Texas Tech, Tyler Shuh, he's back. But I wonder if can that defense carry the momentum they had, you know, coming out of last year and into this year? You also need to watch out for Jalen Daniels for Kansas. Kansas is still, you know, actually surprisingly okay. They're, Kansas is okay, which is crazy to think about. Crazy to think about the words Kansas and not completely terrible. And the Pac-12, the conference of quarterbacks, the conference that's going to die after this year. You have USC ranked number six. It's all on Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams and a group of transfers on defense. And Washington at number 10. Oh, boy, it's Michael Penix time. It's Michael Penix time. I think the Huskies have, you know, have the, the materials to maybe stop the pass on defense. Can they stop it? We'll see. But I think this Washington team has all the it factor for me. It, it it it's it, it, this is the third team I want in the playoffs. I want to see it, it be pretty funny, admittedly. Of course, you know you have Utah with Cam Rising back after an ACL tear and a difficult schedule for Utah, by the way. Bo Nix is just having fun in Oregon. He's just having fun out there. Oregon State has Clemson transfer DJ Ulagule. Under Jonathan Smith, you know, Chip Kelly trying to move on from DTR, what we do with Dante Moore. And, you know, good old Coach Prime, good old Deion Sanders, who's lost two straight celebration bowls, by the way. You know, won a mid, 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 mid swack twice in the past couple years. And, you know, I, I, I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. It's Colorado. Y'all going to have to switch back to the eye bone and go back to the 1980s, late 1980s, early 90s. It's about that time, Colorado. It's about that time. I'm sorry. Dion is not it. I, I've been very vocal about it over the past couple of years that Dion is not that guy for me. But I do think Washington is that team for me. And I think the Pac-12, in its final season, in its current form, We'll have a playoff team, and it will be the Washington Huskies. I do not care. I, I really don't. I, I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't. Don't go. Don't go after me. I think Washington has the factors needed. USC's defense is worse than Washington's. That's all you need to know, right there. In the SEC, too many teams that are ranked high in the preseason, but it is what it is. You have Georgia at number one. Carson Beck is going to be the guy, it looks like. Brock Bowers is still here. Kirby Smart is still coaching it up. Mike Bobo's new OC. And honestly, we all know that. We, we At this point, you, uh, you already know who I'm picking for that last playoff spot. It'll be Georgia for me. Um, Alabama's got question marks. You have that bum, Tyler Buchner. You know, it could be at quarterback. You have Jalen Milrow, who he, he did decent in, you know, some stints last year. I expect Alabama to go back to their, you know, Trent Richardson, Derrick Henry. Uh, uh, um, um, Eddie Lacy, you know, type rushing attack. I'm expecting them to go back to that, and I expect Alabama – to lose at least one or two games, I'm, I'm, I, just, I just don't, I just don't see it. At least one, probably two, and this, and one, of, and one of these teams that I think they might lose to is the LSU Tigers, a really fun team. Harold Perkins on the defensive side, who emerged last year. Jaden Daniels on the offensive side under Brian Kelly, man, really good. Tennessee lost a lot, but you know. Watch out for that transfer from the Texas Longhorns, Brew McCoy. Watch out for that guy. He might be able to do something this year under Josh Heupel and this speedy offense that Tennessee will run. Ole Miss, although they have, you know, they have Judkins back, they have 
um, Jackson Dart back. I, I just don't want this team to collapse in the lane, Kiffin. This man last year had one of the worst collapses I've ever seen in my entire life. And that, that Ole Miss team had something. And instead, you know, instead of Ole Miss, you know, taking care of business, they just completely fell apart. And I don't even know why Texas A&M is on here as a ranked team. I mean, do you expect Bobby Petrino to get this A&M offense back on track? Do you expect that from him? With with controlling as Jimbo Fisher at, at the helm. Do you expect that? I don't know. We'll see. Devin Leary transferred to Kentucky. Graham Mertz is at Florida. And I think don't think Florida's going to do anything this year. I'm sorry. And it's Spencer Rattler. Oh, boy. He improved last year, and he is going to keep going. Why is it South Carolina ranked? I don't, I, I don't get it. South Carolina should be ranked instead of Texas A&M, but, you know, it is what it is with the preseason polls. Now, everybody else, Notre Dame. Sam Hartman, he is at Notre Dame now, and a bevy of backs are going to, you know, help him out against a very tough schedule that includes Clemson, that includes Ohio State, that includes USC. And I don't think Ohio State, or rather, I don't think Notre Dame will be able to beat all of them, but they will win at least one to two of those games. I don't think they will beat all three, but they will win one to two. And Notre Dame will have a, you know, really, you know, good season for the most part. And I think, you know, they're probably going to lose another game in there as well. That's probably unexpected that you might say. But, yeah. Notre Dame's r- real good for a 10-2 finish, I think. And then Tulane, the the only thing really that can take out Tulane is themselves. When you have Michael Pratt, a really good quarterback, when you have the green wave, you know, coming off their best season in, in you know, nearly 20 years, and, I mean, you have a weaker, newer American conference. This conference is mid. I do not get the hype for the American. I, I do not. The only the only team that can really come out of here is Tulane. Yes, there's Frank Harris in UTSA. Yes, Tom Herman is with Casey Thompson, you know, now. Um, yes, Q teams that are new have new looks like UNT or uh, Navy or, uh, you know, or like, uh, I don't know, USF. I mean, again, the American is looking to be a more of a bottom tier conference. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Like this conference is just not it. It's looking like the old USA in terms of, you know, the, the types of teams in it. But the quality of the football is going to take a downgrade. I'm sorry. It's going to take a downgrade. You need to watch out for the Sun Belt. What we need to be watching out for is James Madison. Who we need to be watching out for is Appalachian State, Coastal Carolina, even though Chad, well, I think he left somewhere. I forgot where he went off to. Troy, South Alabama. I mean, you, there's some Tuesday games. There's some Wednesday games. There's some Thursday games, some Friday games. There's going to be more Saturday games, I bet, on the ESPN family of networks that isn't ESPN Plus plus NFL Network. Sunbelt is for real at this point. They will definitely be the fifth best conference come 2024 and maybe even one of the best conferences this year. And I don't understand why people are high on Boise State. I really don't get it, but fine, whatever. Boise State can have their hype. I, I I genuinely do not care. I don't see the hype. I just don't see it. I don't know what people are getting excited about. I don't know where these projections are coming from. I just don't get the hype. Fuck Boise State. They are mid at this point. Their their allure has you know gone past. We have gone past the point of talking about Boise State each and every year. That is that team is no longer there. We're not in. We're not we're, we're not at that point anymore. This is ten years after Boise State has you know been dominant. They are no longer dominant. Mid. And speaking of you know Mountain West teams, San Diego State, you made the right decision by staying. Because I mean, look at what the Pac-12 did to itself. All right, my preseason predictions. All right, all right. 
couple, again, my CFP looks a little different than everybody else's. Um, I do not think two Big Ten teams will make it to the college football playoff. I think Ohio State might lose two games. I really do. I just don't see the hype with, you know, whoever is going to step out a quarterback, and I don't think it's going to mean too much. So, yeah, Michigan-Washington in the Rose Bowl, traditional matchup. I know that's not going to mean anything anymore come 2024, but hey. And then Georgia-Florida State going to be in the sugar. I think Georgia will slip as far as, you know, where they are going to be ranked because of how weak their schedule is. You know, Michigan is in the same boat, but I think, you know, the Big Ten and the SEC are kind of neck and neck, and it's kind of it's kind of funny because you know the media contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of neck and neck. But I think Michigan will have the edge because of the experience coming back more so than Georgia, as far as you know the talent on the field. I'm not going to make a champion prediction or anything like that. This is my prediction for the CFP. This is who I think will be in it. Washington. Um, Honestly, you could you could sub Washington with Texas if they were to able to only lose one game. You could sub them with an Ohio State if they were able to lose one game. You could sub them with an Alabama if they were able to lose one game. So those are the other three I considered. Um, I, I kind of considered LSU, but I was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't really see it. I kind of considered USC for like two seconds, but then I realized. USC's defense is poo-poo, trash. So, no. Um, The other New Year's Six projections, I have Ohio State taking on Tulane, Clemson, LSU, rematch of the uh, 2019 National Championship in the Orange. Again, you got to have an ACC, SEC team. It was either either take LSU, put them there, or Alabama. I I didn't want to see Clemson, Alabama again. I thought, Clemson, LSU, that sounds nice. The Peach Bowl, I have Penn State and Alabama, a matchup that we haven't seen in quite some time. We haven't seen that since the 2010-2011 series. Remember when Alabama did home and homes? I mean, yeah, they're doing one this year with Texas, and yeah, they're doing some, you know, next year and beyond, but man. And in the Cotton, I have the rematch of the 2005 National Championship, a rematch of a couple games that uh, these two teams had a couple seasons ago. It's Texas, USC. I mean, what can you say? The Big 12 champion, my projection is that Texas will be the Big 12 champion. Um, Tulane will be the highest ranked five team. Because um, I think, you know, that that's the only team really right now that you can say. Because, I mean, you know, there's still a lot unproven. I think the Sun Belt will kind of cannibalize itself this year in, in some ways. And, you know, of course, the Sun Belt will sustain losses against Power 5 teams, but they'll cannibalize themselves in conference play where a lot of teams will be like 6-2, and 7-1, and one, no undefeateds in conference play. And then Tulane should just easily take a weak AAC. And the Mountain West is the true conference, is one of the true conferences of parity, I think. We need a West Coast conference that is you know, that has parity and Mountain West provided that for us. And, you know, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was 2021 like when that Mountain West season was really good. And I thought now, and I thought Mountain West football was really exciting to watch. I don't think it was in 2022, 2022 was kind of more about Tulane, but 2021, that was some good stuff from Mountain West. Um, in any case, that's what I have. Um, you're going to see that thumbnail. It's going to have James Madison again. Watch out for the Sun Belt. Watch out for James Madison this year. I also considered them to put them in the Fiesta, which is kind of crazy for a team that just jumped up. But, again, James Madison has that championship pedigree, that type of, you know, that type of it factor. Again, do you agree with my CFP um, predictions? If you don't, Go ahead and you know sound off. I know I know some people's probably gonna be like, what about Drake May? Why isn't he the Heisman winner? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of I, I kind of wanted I kind of wanted it to be Phoenix. Why why can't it be Michael Phoenix Jr.? Come on, 
come on. I, I, I want this is the CFP that looks good to me. Yes, these are all teams that have made playoff before, too. That's kind of what I want. So that'll do it from here. I will see you all next Tuesday in regards to college football. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I think I think that's the only video I got for the week. So I'll see you all next Tuesday to talk more college football. And we'll talk about Week Zero. We'll talk about Navy, uh, Notre Dame. We'll talk about USC, uh, San Jose State. And then we'll talk about a few FCS games and everything like that. So, yeah, I'll, I will see you all next Tuesday. Y'all take care. Have a good night, day, whatever, whatever you're seeing this. Take care. Just take care. See ya.